Welcome back, engineers. Today, we're going to be talking about picking your project. This is a very important step because without it, we could choose a product that is irrelevant or picking something that we can't accomplish. And so we need to figure out how do we pick a project? Now, in a real world environment, there are several ways that we can pick a project. In class, I have given you a list of suggestions, but I've also told you, you can come up with your own. So if you haven't picked one already, you might want to look at these ideas and how we pick a project. And if you're just following along, you definitely want to. So the first major way that we've already talked about is internal projects. That is where your manager or maybe someone above them has come out and said, Hey, we need this as a project. We need it done. And they'll often even give a deadline. At that point, that's what you're working on because your manager has assigned it to you. Now, what types of projects might this be? Well, there's a wide variety of them. In my career, I have built tools for the human resource department. I have built reports and interactive tools that accounting and people who need to use accounting information were able to use. I've created tools for the support desk, for our internal help desk, as well as for our train department. Now, if you look at that, I've actually never worked as part of the help desk, the accounting department, or even HR. Yet I've done work in each of those different departments because those were tasks that were assigned to me. So this is the easiest type of task to be assigned to come up with a project because it's given to you. It's already got approval from management. Now, the second big project type is what we refer to as an external project. What that means is it's not going to be used internally. It's going to be used by people outside the organization. This could be a customer that goes to a website and uses something. This could be a product that they're going to download and install on their phone or their computer at home. This could be any number of things from productivity software that another business might use or something personal that only an individual you use like a game. So there's a very large range of different types of tools that you can choose from. So how do we pick a project like this? Well, there's a couple of different things. If you're an employee and you have a manager, your manager's probably going to pick these for you and you're going to be assigned to a team that will be working on that product. Now, if you were doing this on your own, you get to play that role of manager and figure out how do I want to pick this particular idea? So let's talk about a couple of ways real quick that you can make these decisions. So one way, and one way I like to start off with is looking at what problems do I have? What things am I frustrated by that maybe a good software product will help make my life easier or allow me to do something I can't do already? And so I'm going to look at these both in my personal life as well as in my professional life. And I'm going to start thinking of ideas like, how can I solve this problem? And could I turn this into a product? Now, these ideas can be wide ranging. For example, I might have a to-do list that's designed around my family. And therefore I can check with my kids and make sure they're doing their tasks that are assigned to them and they're checked off at the end of the day. Likewise, maybe there's something my wife wants to be able to add to my to-do list to make sure that I get it done around the house. So that's an idea. On my business side, I might have something to schedule classrooms so that I can have meetings with students or student groups. Maybe I have something I want to schedule for tutoring to work in the tutoring center and work around that idea. Maybe there's something else and your experiences will vary, but allow you to come up with your own unique solution. The fact of the matter is you're probably not the only person with that problem. And if you have a problem and you know how to solve it, maybe that's a good product that other people need solved for them. Like I said, this can be both personal or business. The second place that I'll start to find areas that I might think of for ideas is going to be on something like I'll go online into a form and say, Hey, who's having an issue with 
And then we start to identify, okay, there's a task that other people have problems with. This could be a management piece of software. Maybe this is something that's going to be a scheduling software that I need to make so I can easily schedule employees, but designed for a small business that's not so complicated to set up. Maybe it's something else entirely. And so I can go into a small business forum or I can go into Reddit or I can go in other places and find where these problems might occur and therefore say, hey, could I think of a solution? Another example that you might find is where you have a place where people are actually selling a business and you can go online and find these businesses for sale and say, hey, is this something that I can do? Maybe I can buy that and fix it, make improvements, or maybe I can say, you know what? It might be easier for me just to start from scratch and work with it that way. So you don't have to start with an original idea. You can look at things that other people are doing. And in fact, that's usually a safer thing because you know that it can be done and there are people who are using it and therefore probably interested in paying for it. So find different things in different places to determine, okay, is this a product that I wanna go and investigate further? So what is our idea? Well, I mentioned a little bit before, but I wanna go just a little bit more detail. We're gonna create what's known as a SaaS product or software as a service. Now, software as a service means it's software that's hosted by the people who make it, and they will then lease it to someone online through usually a web account, possibly mobile account, for a certain amount every month or year. This way, you don't have to worry about installing the software, managing it, etc. There's lots of examples of SaaS, and some of them you use, some of them you may pay for, some you might get for free. Or sometimes there's what's known as a freemium model where it's free for you, but if you want certain extra features, you have to pay for it. A great example of this is actually Google. They have several products that are free for most people, but for their power users, they have a paid tier. Things like Gmail and the office applications they create. You can pay a certain amount every month and get additional storage and features and things like that. There's other things out there that are only paid, things like Salesforce, and there's things out there that are also only free, and you can find those online as well. Now, if it is free, the big question is, okay, how do they make their money to pay for their servers, their software developers, their support, etc.? And this is where you often see things like ads being used to generate revenue. Does it generate enough? that's for you to have to decide. There's a lot of factors that go into that and you have to consider it. I encourage you to look at things like social media, which is free to the end user, but then look at how many ads you see. So if you're scrolling on something like Facebook or X or Instagram, how many posts do you see before you see an ad? And then how many posts do you see before you see another ad? And is that a user experience that you want to put out there for your users. Now, what are we going to be doing as a SaaS? Well, the idea is to create a very easy to use and implement employee 360 review system. Now I say easy to implement because a lot of times 360 review systems are difficult to implement. They require a month, two or more for you to interact with someone on the sales team and get a project manager and create your questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Our goal will be to create something much, much simpler to implement. Some place where you can literally upload a spreadsheet with names and a department and the manager, and automatically it will create the whole system for you using predetermined questions. So you can literally go live either that day or maybe the next day. Because it's not going to be quite so customized, it's going to be very simple, we should also be able to find an affordable price point to make it interesting to smaller businesses. Now, a lot of times, big businesses, they don't care as much because they have budgets that are designed for stuff like that. But a smaller, medium business is going to be the target market we're going to look at, not trying to implement this over a company that's got 10,000, 50,000 employees or more. And yes, there are plenty of companies like that, 
but there's a whole lot more companies that have 100 to 500 employees. So that's where we're going to be targeting and marketing our idea to. Now, how are we going to implement this? Well, we're going to be looking at a mobile first web ready type of interface. What that means is you could be sent a QR code that you can snap with your phone and use it or get an email link and automatically sign you in and therefore you can use it. Now, throughout this process, we're going to show you what a full complete project would look like. And then we're going to focus on developing an MVP or a minimally viable product that will give us some test data to work with. We're going to be talking about the MVP as well as all of our other steps in future videos. So now that we have our product started, we're going to have to do a couple of things. Our next step is going to be requirements gathering. That is taking that general idea that we have and making it into concrete statements about what this product is going to do. Once we have that, we can move on to our next steps. So stick around for that video because it's coming up next in this series.